Annika, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks, Andy. It's lovely to be here. Well, this is much nicer. There's no yeah. delay. We had a delay on the line, which <laughs> makes it very difficult to communicate. Now we can articulate perfectly well. Um, so Annika has trained with me as a coach, is a huge part of the dry app and alcohol-free community. We were just talking about it off air that last night you were delivering uh, one of the support Zoom groups for the dry yeah. app, which is so cool, isn't it? That yeah. not only has this coaching thing for you blossomed into something that you can take away in terms of those coaching skills and techniques, you're now reapplying that into the world of alcohol-free and dry, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you for joining me. So I think what's always a nice place to start so people can get to know you if they don't know you already, just your heroes or heroines journey that brought you to this place where you want to give back and, and coaching's allowed you to do so. Okay, so like many people, I had been going back and forth with giving up alcohol for probably since about 2019. Like, and I know everyone says it, but there was many, many day ones. And I was like, yeah. oh, why can't, why can't I get this to stick? What's all that usual? What's wrong with me? I just don't want to drink anymore. But so it took me a while. And then in, I think it was 2021, it must be now. Yeah, because I'll be three years in June. Um, so I always think like my first year of alcohol free was really white knuckling. So just trying to get used to that new life and going out, socializing, doing all the things that you would normally do and have a drink and then trying to figure out how the hell do I do this without a drink? So I just felt that first year was like, oh, just get through it. And then sort of into my sort of 18 months, I started thinking, I want to do a bit more with life. I'm kind of just on, I'm, I've given up drinking, but I'm still just kind of on that hamster wheel. And I guess I was looking for something to develop me because I felt like I was comfortable with not drinking and I guess I wanted to I could see how alcohol was affecting other people and I thought it's got to be a way I can without being like look at me I'm amazing I've stopped drinking you should do it too yeah. and that sort of lecturing kind of way but is there a way to support people who you know like we talk about those gray area drinkers that not you know maybe like me they were binge drinkers or having a few glasses of wine every night so I started to think I'd done quite a bit of self-development myself I'd worked with some coaches I'd done lots of stuff and um, so yeah I just started looking around to see to see what there was and then I was very fortunate to be on dry from day one it came at such a perfect time in my life I was that was a point in my life where I was like not really got any community around me I had convinced myself I was the only sober person in Scotland mm -hmm. <laughs> um but I hadn't actually gone out to see what was out there you know we talk about we tell ourselves a story well I'd told myself that story and it just cut off so much from me and then I just found out about dry threw myself into it on day one got a post up and then obviously you were in there and then the, then the coaching just sort of came my way and at that point, I was actually, when I was thinking about coaching, it was between that and then actually going to work with a coach again who I'd already worked with. And I kind of felt like, no, I want a bit of that, what she's taught me. I want to be able to go and give back to people now. And um, the first coaching um, sort of session I joined with you, you know, when you were like in the workshops you do, um, I was actually on holiday in Costa Rica, <laughs> sitting watching it on my phone going, yes. oh, that'll be good. <laughs> From the beach. But that is yeah. the beautiful thing about the technology now, isn't it? Even as a coach, even me delivering the workshops, mm -hmm. we're doing this on Zoom. You're up in Scotland and yeah. I'm down in Essex and we're having this lovely conversation. It's completely changed changed the game in that regard. And even coming back to the, the dry app, and, and for yeah. those that don't know what dry is, dry is the app that was born out of the coach training course as well. Matt Pink, who took the coach training course, kept coming up with all these different ideas for things that he wanted to do. And Dry was one of those that I fell in love with. And he's done such a brilliant job with. And Annika now does such a great job of being part of that team along with Crystal. And there's a real community building from that, yeah. isn't it? You can feel it now. It's starting to take on a life of its own that people are getting together like you do in Scotland mm -hmm. with lots of people. Matt's just gone up. Uh, was that in Scotland as well? Yeah, Matt just well, took was a group of people. Yeah, up in Perthshire that we're at. Yeah, and then you see meetups happening around. And I think that's, you know, something that we're all starved of a little bit is 
community and it was funny that you were starting to tell yourself those stories oh well there's no one else I'm the only sober person in Scotland right which is like the greatest untruth of all untruths but we believe our stories to be true don't we so sometimes you have to have that lived experience of actually there's quite a few people and one of our best ever events was in Scotland when we came up to meet you up in Edinburgh it was brilliant I mean you know probably one of the the best attended considering the rain was horrific that day (laughs) But it was a it was a great day. I think that was one of the first events that we've done, and uh, you know, to see such a big squad of people coming out mm-hmm. in that weather was brilliant. And you know, and I, th- you know, just before we move on, I, d- I do want to thank you for being a massive part of Dry and its success. Like you said, you've been in it from day one, and you feel as much part of it as anyone, you know, myself yeah. included. So, thank you for that. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so in terms of your story, so you took a break from alcohol. Yeah. You started to build some momentum. You got into self-development. What were some of the big wins? So you were, you know, let's just say you were, you know, in point A and then you took a break from alcohol, developed yourself and arrived at point B. What was the, the sort of big differences that you noticed? I think one of the big differences for me was starting to have that belief in myself. So when I was drinking, I just never felt like I'd, I'd have goals, but then I'd be like, who are you to do that? You cannot do that. And I just fought myself out of anything. I think stopping drinking gave me that headspace to go, well, why can't I do that? At least give it a go. And it, and um, so I think self-belief and confidence. And then it, I always think like things sort of just start coming up when you start changing the way you think. So once I started to think, no, there are things I can do. I believe I can do these things. Things like the coaching just showed up or you know, some like the coach I worked with before, dra- um, before doing the coaching, just just came like appeared on my Instagram feed one day and I was like oh she's good I'm gonna go and see what she's all about so they were like the winds of just kind of changing the way I was looking at the world meant that or you know I would, would always think when I was drinking oh rubbish I just go to work do my job life's quite boring go out and drink on the weekend <laughs> hung over till Thursday start again and never saw like all these opportunities out there was just closed off to them and once I took the drink away it was just like it's like taking the drink blinkers off and then going wait a minute (laughs) there's quite a lot of good stuff in the world out there that I can get involved in and then it was just feeling well I'm just going to try these things and if it works great and if it didn't quite work well at least I gave it a go and I wouldn't beat myself up about it either I'd think well you tried it not maybe that's not for you Let's move on and see what else is out there. Yeah, it's so powerful to hear you talk about that because so many people are living that life. Mm. Wrongly or rightly, that's only they who can like decide that, but just living for the weekend effectively, yeah. but then even not really living for the weekend, living to have a few drinks yeah. at the weekend to feel a bit better, which actually net net really destroys the weekend, which keeps you in that place of you know not recovered properly poor sleep you don't end up doing the things that actually really spark joy yeah and then you wake up a bit groggy and a bit tired on Monday and you wish for the weekend and you play that same game again Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it takes so much courage to break that cycle and then have a look at life through fresh eyes and like you said try new things and not everything's going to work out but in doing so you rediscover I think the richness of life again you know without alcohol in it and all of a sudden you're not waiting for the weekend to arrive around you're actually starting to fill your life up like with these incredibly empowering things for example was it just yesterday you were running the dry group was that yesterday yes I did the support zoom yesterday and like what one person turned up but it's still like well you've you've reached out and spoke to one person I mean what would I've normally been doing on a Sunday when I was drinking I probably would have still been in bed on my 800th episode of friends waiting for the takeaway to arrive yeah, so yeah. it's like you know um and it just I think it's because when you stop drinking it gives you all that time back where you've kind of wasted you know yourself you've wasted so much time hung over so you've missed all these opportunities but now from stopping drinking there's all this time to use and explore things that that are interesting to you yeah and I don't think we realize how many of those days are friends days netflix binges stuck in front of the tv getting over emotional at things that we've Mm -hmm. never normally get over emotional at and just writing the whole day off yeah that like drudgery and tiredness and then the weekend's gone yeah that one moment in time most people if they've got that working week 
set up to really do things that like nourish your mind and body missed yet again and you've only got to miss a few of those right yeah. you start to compound it and you go hold on that's a quarter of a year or half the year mm. of weekends you know whatever that might be 25 weekends sort of lost to that drudgery that's half your life yeah. you know I mean? it's half your free time and I think having the courage to reevaluate that and think right I'm going to do something different is so powerful and that's why you know I love what you're doing now as well as inspiring people like myself as well to go out there and just try try something new mm -hmm. i love it so in that that cauldron of sort of learning and growth and development you said you started to get into self-development what did what did that look like for you um so i'd always like kind of like things like yoga and, but i was never consistent with it so it was things like starting that practice back up and actually making sure I made time for that so that was self-development for me to just go no you will do like 20 minutes of yoga every day and that got my headspace a lot clearer and um, started getting into meditation um, which I do do I do still struggle with it a bit but I do try and do like at least five minutes a day and then I guess it was just like starting to look at new books like picking up different books and reading them and then finding people on Instagram that were quite inspiring and yeah working with I've worked with two coaches one was an emotional freedom technique coach who did like help me with a lot of my anxiety and blocks and then actually before I went on the coaching course I worked with another coach because I did have quite a big wobble before I started the coaching and um, so yeah, just getting more in that headspace of feeling good about myself and not always like belittling myself and that voice going, oh, you're not good enough. You can't do that. So many limiting beliefs. And it was just taking time to work through them. And like I was saying before, just people would just appear on my Instagram who were, were just saying stuff that I was like, oh, that's that resonates with me. What are they doing? Let's go and follow them and doing loads of online um courses workshops things in the evening it's like you're saying instead of like being hung over it was like right, I'm going to get involved in in other things and you know I'm really like into astrology I'm into like working with the moon and things like that all that really helped me as well so I just followed all these like little breadcrumbs and it'd be like I'd do one course and then another thing would show up from doing that and I just I just got myself involved in everything because I had all this time and I was like I don't want to sit and watch crap on tv all night I've got such a buzz out of doing that self-development and I could see slowly but surely I was like growing into who who I had kind of lost all those years through drinking I always wanted to connect back to the person who I was one was when I was 20 because I knew at 20 I was so confident I'd go and do anything that person had just got buried under the drink and slowly started bringing her back up to the surface. Yeah, that's so cool to hear that, like real you shining through, that confident you shining through. And just coming back to something you said there about the wobble. Yeah. So what was the wobble? And then going through the training process, like what was the outcome of that? Like what was the fear and then what was the reality and, and what was the, the sort of success of that? Well, it was quite funny because it was actually at the that retreat that all the... A dry gang have been on at the weekend I went up there with Steve and we we just did this retreat of breath work and sort of journaling and stuff and I was like oh I've signed up for this course what the hell am I doing I don't think I can do it it's just just like so far out of my comfort zone and it was all that who am I to think I can be a coach and I had a complete like I just I'm just gonna not do it like and a real like can't do it imposter syndrome so that was like my big wobble but I knew um I knew the person I needed to work with to help me through that and I got in touch with her so sort of it ran in parallel with me doing the coaching I worked with her for 10 weeks so it really helped me because some stuff that came up in our coaching course I would go to her and go oh what am I doing on the course <laughs> like I don't think I can complete it and she'd be like right let's have a look at this let's unpick it and that really helped me and I was fortunate enough that I could do that at the, at the same time as the coaching course but yeah I think it was that complete you know what it's like when you've got out of that comfort zone and you're like no I want to go back in it why did I why did I get out yeah. of the comfort zone um yeah 
the genie's out the bottle, as it were. Basically. And then what's great about that is being coached whilst training as a coach. And we try and do a lot of that as well. I think that's really important because then you know the value and the power of coaching firsthand because mm-hmm. you have that lived experience. And then, you know, you get the power to pass that on to other people, which is really cool. And then, of course, you successfully graduated from the course so all those fears and doubts and angst and worry that that we carry in those limiting beliefs can no longer exist in that frame because here you are out the other side and now Mm -hmm. really you're starting to coach starting to run some of the groups within dry you know group coaching all these wonderful things are starting to happen so how was that experience been for you you know in terms of coming out the other side and then now you know graduating into the world um yeah, it's been, it's that has been another roller coaster, shall we say? Because I guess, like in our coaching course, you're in like this really nice container. Everybody's there for you. You know, you've, you're always going to meet with the group once a month, and it's always such a, like the week. I love those weekends because like we had such a great sort of atmosphere and great connection. When that went away, and then you were kind of like, oh god, <laughs> like what am I doing? What am I doing with this? I don't know. Um, and I'm still working full time and just growing this on on the side. And I guess it's similar to what I was saying to you earlier. It's just been trying to follow those little breadcrumbs that are being put out for me and seeing where that leads. Um, I've had days where I'm like, I'm not going to do the coaching. I can't do it. I just don't understand how I'm going to make it work. But then there's other days where you get like, so I signed up to the coaching pool at work Um and I got within two days, I got them contact me and say, we've got someone that wants to work with you. Well, you prepared to work with them. So I've been working with them for a few weeks. And that's really helped in like that work environment to sort of build my confidence again. Um, and just know that that workspace is a bit of a safe space for me to still sort of play and experiment with my coaching. And then hopefully and as I go further out on my own, I'll just keep you know, going and knowing that I've, I've got that experience too. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's been, there's some days where you're like, yes, I'm a coach. I'm going to be the best coach ever. And I'm not going to lie. There's some days I'm on the floor going, God, what have I done? I don't know how to make this into well, a business. <laughs> yeah. And, and do you know what? It is a really, I think, common thread. You know, you, we go through the lovely experience of training as a coach and it's like, all right, now this is a thing. How on earth am I going to turn this into a thing? And obviously, we do as much as we can to support and help people through that process. But very often, you know, it's a time thing mm. as much as anything, isn't it? It's like, right, the training wheels are still on. As you described brilliantly, you know, what lots of people do is is go back into their place of employment and start coaching there, whether it be their colleagues or whether it be in a coaching pool like you described. And that starts to build that momentum and that skill set. Because even back in my own story, I spent the best part of three years really not doing a lot with my coaching I didn't Uh really have the sort of the time or the intention even to turn it into a thing luckily I just kept in the game long enough and that's what I'm always trying to articulate to our coaches and why we have lots of ongoing training we had a brilliant training today you'd have loved was you on the training today no, no, I've been at a networking event this morning. Oh, so, yeah, look at you. yeah so you I know. <laughs> missed out on it. And it was all about meditation and breath work, but like these sort of extra things, because I think it's really important to stay in the game and then let it unfold over time, like it did for me. And then it was that sort of penny drop moment some three years later. I'd taken a break from alcohol. I'd been doing a little bit of coaching around the edges in the executive space. And then all of it came together with this concept of, oh, I wonder could I utilize these coaching skills now to help people take a break from alcohol who are like me the average drinker the middle lane drinker and then that kick started like the whole thing you know yeah. and the reason i'm here uh, and we've helped hundreds of thousands of people is because really of that coaching insight so i think you're in the perfect place that's exactly the best way to do it and then let it just sit with it and let it unfold organically and naturally and you'll find yeah. your your rhythm and your groove so on that note what are some of the things that you've learn about yourself through this coaching process I, th- I think the thing I've learned the most is that I can I can do the hard things and um, yeah. one one thing that happened to me on the coaching course I can't remember exactly what we were doing I don't know if we've been in a triad or something but I'd really felt it hadn't gone well at all and we broke for lunch and I was like I'm not going back to that after lunch 
<laughs> just can't do it. And I'm fortunate enough that I'm in a WhatsApp group with um, like Rich, Nick, Zena, Matt and Tammy. I just put in the group, I'm not coming back after lunch, guys. I just can't do this. And they were all like, what the hell are you doing? Get logged back on. You just, you didn't do as bad as you thought. Just come in and just carry on. And I guess, yeah, it's just learning that it was a safe place to make mistakes. And that doesn't mean you're bad and you can't coach. And it was, it helped me learn from the mistakes I was making as well and not see them as like, well, you've made that mistake. There's no way you can go out in the world and be a coach if you're if you're making mistakes now. And it let also let me just accept that um I was a beginner, I was learning something new. I guess it's like stopping drinking. You're gonna make those mistakes, and it's just you're gonna do that throughout life. So and it's just giving yourself the grace to make the mistake, but then not spend like weeks going beating yourself up for it. So I think it really just helped me accept that whole learning process. And I think that's one of the greatest learning experiences you can have. It develops yeah. a growth mindset, doesn't it? That actually mm-hmm. we learn more by getting it wrong than we do by getting it right. And we talk about that right at the start of the course. And I actually think it's one of the best things that comes out of the whole experience is learning to fail publicly mm-hmm. again as an adult, which is really hard to do. Yeah. Because as adults, we don't like doing that. We don't we don't like to get it wrong. We want to be perfect. And I think what happens with that fixed perfectionist style mindset we stay small all the time we can't take on challenges we can't get outside of our comfort zone because if we fail it defines us as a failure or Mm -hmm. we lose we're a loser whereas going through the coach training process it stretches you to the point that you're going to get things wrong it's like on day one of the coach training i think we get everyone coaching and i know no one's got any of the information so they're all going to like a hundred percent of people are going to fail Mm -hmm. right no one's no one's doing that but they can't because they don't have all the information yet or the learning. But again, through that process of getting it wrong, it gets people a bit more comfortable with, oh, it's not the end of the world. Like if I don't do it all perfectly, there is a chance for me to learn and grow and develop and get better. And obviously that unfolded for you throughout the course. And those moments are really powerful, aren't they? Like you, you just yeah. told that lovely story there. Continue to tell. Um, I think my microphone just switched off there. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, I've just, is it back on there? Yeah, I think so. Uh, your, the, 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 yes, perfect. Yes. Just because it was going to my, yeah. but when you're telling that story, that's something that obviously really resonated with you. You know, that yeah. moment of, I almost gave up. I went to your WhatsApp group. And by the way, Annika had, they had a, a WhatsApp group uh, as part of your cohort, which is probably one of the, like the best, they've just gelled beyond belief yeah. I mean there's friends for life in that group most definitely absolutely yeah, it's pretty cool isn't it that side of it but here you are telling a story now about not your biggest triumph not the moment that you aced the coaching session it was the moment that you almost gave up but you mm-hmm. didn't that's where the big learn is and this is what people miss out on all the time they think oh it's you only learn from the moment when you lift the trophy and you graduate actually your biggest learn was when you almost gave up but you didn't yeah I know I, know. I think that's a really beautiful thing so in terms of your coaching, where it's at now, what's what's the, the vision, the plan, if there is one? So it's, it, it took me a while to kind of decide what I wanted to do with this, the coaching. And I, I was very, at first, against doing the alcohol-free coaching. Um, I don't know why, but then every time, so when we did, you know, the extra alcohol-free module at the end, I came away from that and I was like, why am I just rejecting this? I really like this. And also I've got experience of that. I've I've tried to give up for so many times. So I've got that lived experience. And I'm really like, I I took that how I feel when I get to help people in dry, like just commenting on them. And you get like someone say, thanks, you've really helped me. That was what I was like, wanted to do with my coaching and drive that forward. So I am trying to position myself in that alcohol-free coaching fit space. But what I want to do is, um, and I think you talk about this, Andy, is it's not all going to be about alcohol-free. It's that I'm kind of marketing myself as alcohol and mindset. So we get you get you out of the drinking habits or taking a break, and then it's working on the mindset. And because I brought so many practices into my life, like gratitude, journaling, meditation, things like that, that's what I want to bring in and I'm currently sort of 
playing around with doing like a long like putting together a sort of six to eight week program where I can work with someone so we do this sort of alcohol free thing at the start but then we go on a bit more of a journey into bringing in some practices that I think will help them because I know they've helped me so yeah it's more of that kind of because I'm like very spiritual wanting to bring all that into the coaching um but what I will say is the coach it's not developing how I thought I thought I was just going to be a coach but I've realized I can bring in the skills I've learned from the coaching course into lots of other things that I, I really like doing like I do tarot reading I've been working on how I could do a reading and then coach somebody through that reading and I'm just launching an astrology course so it's all it's the confidence that the coaching's given me so I'm not I'm like it's not really turned out how I had envisioned and I've had to sort of come to terms with that but now I accept that no that's what it's, that's the gift of the coaching has made me be confident to put together all these other things and I think the skills we've learned you can weave them into anything you do really that is a brilliant insight and that's exactly what happened to me so when I did that coaching course 12 years ago, I had no intention of becoming a coach and I was doing a bit of executive coaching. I could never in the million years have predicted the alcohol-free thing would have been that initial specialism. Um, but what the coaching training did the two or three years prior, it gave me confidence. Yeah. Gave me confidence, like you just described, to think, well, actually, I'm inspired to help people in the alcohol-free space. I've got a skill set that is coaching. How could I shape that? into this new space that I'm now interested in, which is alcohol free. And that, and that kickstarted that whole adventure, just as you described brilliantly. And I think that's what happens for a lot of people that come through the coaching. There's a, there's this essence that you want to give back somehow. I want to contribute, want to matter. And, you know, you've got the vanilla standard out the box, executive coaching, life coaching kind of stuff. But then mm. lots of people realize, well, actually, this is what I love doing. I love walking or hiking. I wonder, can I blend coaching into that? You know, I've got a, an affinity for tarot cards mm -hmm. or readings well, let's just use the same skill set or are really interested in nutrition. But instead of me just giving people a shopping list, I can now ask great questions such as, you know, and get into their emotions around yeah. food and coach around that. And that might be the thing that unlocks the shopping list, whereas before they were just given a shopping list and nothing was happening. So I think it's one of those master skills that you can really then blend and leverage with your life experience and the things that you're interested in. And what that does, it creates something beautiful and unique. So none of us are coaching robots. So if I go and yeah. work with you, you're going to approach it from a totally different angle. We might get the tarot cards out, right? Yeah. That could be something mind-blowingly different for me as opposed to working with someone else that's very much more vanilla exec executive coach. So then we create all these different sort of approaches that allows different people to get different results and different people to want to work with different people. So I'm thrilled to hear that, actually. That, for me, is what coaching is all about. It's not like let's just follow the routine that Andy showed us. It's actually let's take those core elements and then let me blend it into, you know, these different approaches. I think that's, that's, that is really exciting. And then in terms of that, what, what, what does that sort of look like potentially down the line or have you not got that far yet? Um, yeah. So I've got a, like the big dream um, is for Steve and I, we want to have our own retreat in Scotland and have people Brilliant. come where we can help them. And I've got a real, I would love to have it as like an alcohol free place for people who want to, who've stopped and like want to come and try all these different practices. That's, that's like the big goal. And that's what we're sort of manifesting at the moment. And, um, but also have a space where other people can come. So say you came and did like a masterclass on being alcohol yeah. free and then other people come and do yoga or whatever. So it's having that space. Yeah, we'll put on stuff, but it's also giving space to other people that would want to use it and get in touch with people that you might not necessarily be able to get in touch with. So, but I feel like all the stuff I'm doing at the minute is just those stepping stones to get there because each one's like building me up and giving me more skills to do that. And I think it's just being comfortable with it not looking like when I signed up out for the coach and I thought, yeah, I'll be in that executive space. I'll be doing that. And I looked at that and it made me feel so uncomfortable. And I was like, I need to be somewhere where I feel comfortable and it aligns with like my values and stuff. And that's, so I spent a bit of time thinking about what I wanted to do instead of just launching myself into something where I thought I could like I might do that and then it might put me off coaching so I was just learning that it's okay to step back and let it kind of all unfold naturally yeah and it's listening to this what's coming through for me is it's important just to be you 
yeah isn't it authentically you rather than trying to be someone else and think i have to coach like that because andy does it that way or someone else does it that way it's like actually how do i want to approach this you know and mm -hmm. maybe that's a retreat and, and that's got tarot and it's got astrology in there and it's got coaching you know mixed up and in, in you know uh entwined in between like that would create a beautiful experience and what is really exciting when you're even talking about it lighting up to think that you and steve and it's just, you're married aren't you you're married yeah, steve. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah married husband. yeah it was a lovely it was also a lovely 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 guy that, that the, the guys have just been away uh the dry team to a lovely retreat that you mentioned earlier but what an adventure that might be for you both some two three five whatever it looks like down the line to actually then have a space a dedicated space that people come to that you put on events or that people like myself hire that space mm -hmm. or you know work together to create events wouldn't that be something be amazing yeah oh i love it well i'm in Good. Just letting <laughs> Signed you, know. you up, Andy. I mean, I'm, I must admit, I was a bit jealous seeing Matt come back and saying what a great time you had. That's Matt Pink, co-founder mm -hmm. of Dry, who went up there with a group of people saying what a lovely time they had. I was like, oh, that's a bit of me, that. I sort of missed out on that one. Yeah, I think I, I think for me, it's that real feeling. What keeps me going is I just don't like thinking anybody's out there feeling like I felt. So mm. stuck in limiting beliefs, stuck on that hamster wheel of drinking, work, drinking there's just so much more and without being preachy I just if there's people out there that I sort of resonate with and I really want to help them and get them into a better place because there's just so much more out there than what I think a lot of people realize they're capable of as well yeah I love it love it and it was a lovely way to I think wrap up our conversation Annika thank you so much for joining me where could people find out more about you connect if that's possible so I am on mainly on Instagram as optimistic coach um, and I am on LinkedIn, but I'm not on there very much because I find it a bit corporate and I get a bit, oh, I'm not sure about here. There's so, not much tarot reading going on. There on is LinkedIn, not. Is there? No, Let's no. Be <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm generally on Instagram all the time. That's where people can find me. And I'm always uh, in dry yes. as well. If you're on dry, I'm always. Yeah, out Annika's out dry. like the queen of dry. She's like <laughs> the, part of the fabric of the whole thing. So yeah, you can find that absolutely in the the dry app. Do you do you do dry dry lives? Any of the lives in dry? Um. Well, I am going to be starting doing the Thursday morning. I think from April, Brilliant. according to Crystal. So yeah, I'm there really looking so forward to that. So if people are that. listening to this, yeah, you'll be able to listen to Annika live in the dry app at 7 30 a.m on a Thursday I normally do a Tuesday that reminds me I'm doing tomorrow you're on tomorrow um, yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so I've got to remember to do it um yeah and so yeah hook up Vanica there hook up Vanica on Instagram and LinkedIn ish as long as it's not tarot reading I do link, check LinkedIn. it every, every day LinkedIn but I'm not I'm, I'm trying to get a bit more into it but it's just I don't know yeah yeah, you find your <laughs> find your niche. Yeah. Annika, you're a star. And thank you, by the way, a personal thank you from myself and Matt and Crystal for everything you do with Indry as well as all the wonderful coaching and the beautiful energy you're putting out into the world. So thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Andy.